Welcome to the Business of Medicine podcast from the Southern Medical Association. Since 1906, the SMA has had a singular mission to provide medical professionals with the resources they need to learn from each other and in so doing to improve the overall quality of patient care. The Business of Medicine podcast is dedicated to exploring and simplifying the varied and complex business aspects of running a medical practice so that you can do what you do best, provide your patients with the highest possible standard of care. To learn more about the SMA's many other services and educational initiatives, please visit us at sma.org. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, We have a pretty great topic for you today that is very intriguing, pretty innovative. It's a combination of telemedicine, lactation, and nutrition consulting. I'll wait for our expert to take us on a little deeper dive on this topic. But before that, my name is Andy Mohan, and I'm joined by Ms. Jennifer Price, who's the educational manager for the Southern Medical Association and our moderator. We have with us today, Ms. Michelle Bamey, who is the CEO of Sonder Health, is an RN with a clinical background in behavioral health and greater than 25 years of healthcare IT management consulting experience, experience focusing on electronic health records clinical transformation, executive advisory, and virtual health services with leading consulting companies. She uses her clinical and operational and consulting experience to translate the language of healthcare and information technology so clients can focus on efficient, optimal quality of care delivery for their patients. First of all, I want to take this this time to to thank Ms. Bamey personally and would like to thank her on behalf of the Southern Medical Association for joining us today. So Jennifer, would you be kind enough to kick off the discussion and get this get the ball rolling? Absolutely. And first, let me thank you both for joining us today. I think this is going to be a wonderful conversation, and I appreciate you both um, giving your time today. So thank you. Jennifer, for allowing me to uh, join this show and, and to share some of my passion about the telemedicine services that we at Sonder Health provide. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about joining and seeing if I can share some knowledge. Well, let's get started. And why don't you tell us about Sonder Health and its relationship to the telemedicine space? Okay, thank you. Um, so, simply put, on a day-to-day basis, Sonder Health is is a virtual group practice. If you think about um, services, quality care that we deliver when and where patients need us the most. It doesn't matter what time of day. It doesn't matter where they live. It doesn't matter what the type of mobile device that, you know, can be a computer, an iPad, a, a, a phone that they are connecting with us. Um, we serve a need that covers a lot of the barriers to receiving care. A lot of those social determinants of health, those food deserts, those um, maternal and OB um, pediatric deserts that where there's no access to care. And we do this through um, our own group practice and then strategic partnerships. We are not a technology company. Our services sit on on top of any platform. So if they have, if the hospital healthcare system, um, ambulatory site, employer group, if they have American Well, MD Live, Teladoc, whatever technology platform, we can we can uh, work with their services. So. We kind of like to think of ourselves as a powerhouse of experience. You know, we have in our in our ranks, we've got um, a combination of more than 50 years of clinical experience, management consulting, healthcare IT advisory services, and you know, we'd like to to use this to help transform the way that healthcare gets delivered. We have. Um, Over the years, we haven't just watched telemedicine evolve, but we've been an actual uh, part of it. Telemedicine has been around for a long time. I I know back in my behavioral health days, they were talking about telemedicine visits. And, you know, this was before we even had had a a great uh, electronic health record system in our um, in our space. But they were talking about it back then. You know, at, at Sonder Health, we've also been at the forefront of, of change. We've been helping to lead the way um, in order to achieve a singular goal. Basically, we're here to provide evidence-based healthcare solutions so that women and their families can thrive. It's it's our passion that keeps us anchored to that primary mission. And so whether we're helping clients leverage the technology that they've purchased in order to 
you know, increase their outcomes, grow their revenue share of referrals. Um, we work alongside of them and their partner and the end, their partners, their clients, their patients. And the end result is always all these life changing care. Um, our, our company started in 2015 and our leadership team is comprised of clinicians. We have um, a physician, uh, myself, I'm a nurse, and our president is an IBCLC. There was two co-founders, Dr. Sylvia Rahm, and she is, um, she's currently the uh, chief innovation officer at Atlantic Health, but prior to that, she was the chief transformation officer uh, for American Well. And she also is a board certified pediatrician and a lactation consultant herself by background. And Lauren Majors, who is an IBCLC, and she serves as uh, the president of our company. And those two women got together as a result of a, um, a gap in care that both of them coming from a clinical background realized that if they were having problems in the lactation space, that there were a lot of other women were, were as well. And so in addition to, to being clinical, um, you know, Lauren and I have a strong healthcare IT EHR consulting background and combining all of that with healthcare IT, the technology, the advancements in EHR, the technology, the growth of telemedicine, it was a, a really good fit for um, a very passionate group of women to start this company. And I have, um, uh, in addition to the consulting background and clinical, I have that behavioral health background that also helps in a lot of these situations. So then working for us, we have a team of international board certified lactation consultants and registered dietitian. And they're part of a group, a virtual group practice that um, they're ready to see our patients through any type of uh, mobile modality, computer, um, through, you know, live video telemedicine visits. We also, when needed, we have uh, nurse practitioners, we have physicians, consultants, we cover all 50 states. We're dual providers, meaning that some of our international board certified lactation consultants are also um, registered dietitians. And then um, we also have a, a large group of our practitioners that are multilingual as well. And so our, if you think of us as, um, uh, if you think of the brick and mortar practices, we're the same, only we, we're, we're virtual providers. We, you know, we have all the same workflows from registration to dropping claims. Um, it's just that we get to see our patients um, when and where they need us the most. And um, otherwise they might not be able to see, you know, ha have access to care. And so access to care, you know, there's a shortage of specialist um, in the hospitals and healthcare systems today. And so people are turning to telemedicine to put the patients, you know, in front of those providers, as I said, you know, when and where they need them. And we, we have our own group practice, but we also have channel partners that we work with. So we provide services to hospitals, health systems, employer groups, health plans, and then direct to consumer. So in a nutshell, <laughs> that's a little bit about Sondra Health. <laughs> this this is great. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, Jennifer, no, I was saying that, that is a wonderful um, place to be and a wonderful um, service um, to provide. I mean, this is this is fascinating. So Andy, I'll let yeah, you um, explore yeah, it a little bit it's, further. It's very, it's, it's very, very interesting uh, to hear because a lot of us, we know that there's a lack of um, access to providers um, I mean, when you think of providers, you're thinking about clinicians, you know, your, your uh, mid-levels and those kind of things. But to not have access to like, you know, I didn't know that there, there was a lack of registered dietitians, lactation consultants within a, you know, a healthcare uh, system. It, that, is that something that you think is prominent throughout every single healthcare system throughout the United States? Or is it something that has to do with the size of the hospital? Um, how did you guys identify um, that there is that lack of uh, care? 
Um, well, you know, um, to be an IBCLC, you have to be certified and licensed and you have to just like a physician, nurse practitioner. So there are uh, professional organizations. And so much like physicians, when you know that there's a shortage because of the rural health, um, you know, setting or, um, you know, finances from the size of the hospital or the type of hospital, um, those are those are things that we have metrics around through the national associations on how many IBCLCs are licensed per state. And then you take that by, there's a lot of data out there on how many, just like we know how many um, beds are in a hospital, how many physicians are in a hospital, we know how many nurses, how many dietitians, how many IBCLCs are in hospitals. Right. And there, there are statistics around um, baby friendly hospitals, which is, a, you know, a, a certification that um, is somewhat like joint commission, but it's it's around the mother baby. Um, and they have standards on how many IBCLCs need to be staffed at any given time for a hospital. And so a lot of hospitals will um, that are not uh, baby friendly um, hospitals, they haven't gone through the certification, they will use their nurses that are in the OB um, uh, postpartum area as, you know, a lactation consultant and, and there's lactation educators, but the IBCLCs that we use, they are, you know, they have to go through a stringent um, educational course, uh, clinical time, and certification exams, and then they have to keep up their certifications with continuing education. And so we we know that it, it's small hospitals, of course, don't have what they what they need uh, most of the time. But you'd be surprised how many large, even academic institutions don't have the number of IBCLCs and registered dietitians that they really need to have, according to the standards. It's very interesting, uh, Michelle. Do patients like this service and, and, and why do they, do you think? Well, I have to say this is something I'm very, very proud of and um, I owe it to um, our president and, and our team members that provide the service, but we have patients, patients really do love the service and it's almost unprecedented and it sounds a little bit crazy, but our net promoter scores have been a hundred and our uh, providers, the stars rating have been five. And it's, it really, like I said, it's pretty, it's pretty unheard of. Um, we have testimonials from our um, patients and from our, our clients that are our partners and, you know, we um, we document those, you know, the the ones that, you know, they it's really more helpful than I thought it would be. And I feel so much better. I, you know, I didn't know you were going to be this thorough and I had no idea this was the kind of help I was going to get. And it's, you know, we have actual testimonies from when the mom uh, first came and some of the challenges that she she was having and then the follow-up subsequent visits and stuff and so you know we really do have a lot of metrics and a lot of documentation on the satisfaction and you know a lot of these patients they're they're seeing um, this virtual uh, technology is is new to them uh, a lot of ways it's uh, a new way to access and receive care and once they once they get into it, they end up really loving it because you think about a mom who at two o'clock in the morning is, you know, up with this stressed. She's stressed. She's tired. The baby is not um, is not feeding and, you know, is fussy and they they just don't know. Or maybe she's got the beginning stages of, of like mastitis or some type of infection going on or something. And she's kind of at her wit's end and um, she gets an appointment because we're very easy to access and she sees you know a smiling IBCLC who helps her take care of the situation and gets her calmed down and assesses the situation 
and makes a plan. They have follow-up. She has referral capabilities. Um, you know, a lot of these moms have been passed around from their peds office says, no, go back to your OB. And your OB says, no, go to your WIC program. You know, no, go to, you know, the Lelechi League, whatever the case may be. But by the time that mom sees us sometimes, she feels like she's been a ping pong ball. Um, <laughs> You know, where she already has emotions and hormones yeah. and everything. And that's just another layer that of frustration. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I think the other thing is, is that, you know, you take that kind of situation where the baby is not latching properly and there's that frustration. And then, you know, maybe she does have some mastitis going on and stuff. So she can see that lactation consultant. She can help her with the breastfeeding challenge, and then she can get her referred immediately to a provider to be seen for the infection. So you've got that warm transfer from, um, you know, the, the IBCLC to the next provider, and you see both mom and baby. And you can, you can do this from anywhere. That's the beauty of it. If they have their phone in their pocket or their, they have their iPad, you know, um, it's easy and accessible and um, you and your family can see a provider at, at any point. Um, you know, when we have not only the, the patients that like our services, but you know, the consulting side of things that we have, um, you know, we've, we've been in hospitals and healthcare systems for a long time. And we know from the, um, the employer side and you know, the benefits side, what, what a lot of, of um, adults are looking for. And it's, you know, there's a lot of wellness programs, a lot of wellness benefits and stuff so that the nutritional side of things, obesity, some of the comorbidities that a diabetic has, that type of thing. So we can see moms, you know, prenatally all the way to geriatric and we can see you know their their spouses their sons their brothers whoever um you know for the nutrition side and so we can we work with providers and insurers and um you know we really feel that we're helping to deliver that quality care the you know we're in the business to decrease the cost of health care and and help organizations get more referrals in and keep their patients, not, not suffer from, you know, leaking their patients out to someplace else. Because we know moms that, especially those of the childbearing years, um, they're primarily the drivers in their family's healthcare decisions. I mean, they're kind of the CEOs of the house and they, this is the, the demographic that we have really chosen to target and the offshoot is, you know, all the other ages, but we can, we can offer a service that really speaks directly to that demographic, um, you know, of the, the childbearing years and some of the, the challenges that they, they run into. So, um, you know, and we have, we have actually worked, um, you know, across barriers, you know, we have, you know, commercial um, Medicaid populations, you know, it just, it's, you know, a very diverse group and we have a very diverse group of caregivers on top of it. And so hospitals and health systems really love us for our ability to provide care continuity and, you know, extend that capacity of their front line, line in office staff and you know supplement their staff in some some cases but they also they like that care continuity that their their patients are are being able to see and then um you know it's it's support for their families the employers they they love it because you know employee retention job satisfaction it reduces absenteeism if you think about the new mom that we can help you know, prenatally even get her set up so that she has plans for when she's going back to work and how is she going to pump and is she, is she in a breastfeeding uh, safe environment? Is she in a breastfeeding friendly environment when she goes back to work? Is her HR department helping? Um, so this is, um, you know, while, while telemedicine is really growing in all areas, you know, primary care, dermatology, behavioral health, all of that, 
the lactation space and the nutrition space are um, the lactation space especially is a pretty niche market, but it really, really gets to a lot of the other patients in that family or that dyad that need to be seen. And so, you know, there's not only increasing interest, but, you know, people are getting more and more uh, understanding how you don't have to be physically hands-on to make a difference and to provide care. I mean, if you have a if you have a tongue-tied baby, say, you know, you can get pictures, you can have a live video where you can look at that infant's mouth and stuff. The only thing you cannot do is physically put your, your hands on that patient. But um, it's, it really is, um, it's the convenience. Uh, you know, no, consumers. It's, it's, it's the convenience of it. I think that patients would love yeah. something like this. It's just the convenience. You don't have to go and Go to a doctor, you know, get in a car, drive over, you know, blah, blah, blah. You can do it from, like, you can do it right. from your own. And it's just the access is great. In your pajamas. What's that? In your pajamas. In your pajamas. <laughs> I like it. In your pajamas. So it's, it's the access is wonderful. The fact that they can, uh, you know, they can see someone immediately. You know, you mentioned the access. It's pretty simple. You know, you get on your phone or you get on a computer. But at, when you make an appointment, how quickly is the turnaround time? Is there something where is it like a 24-7 service? Is there someone like ready to, you know, to help you out immediately? Or is it has to be scheduled out? Because if it is something at like three in the morning, is there someone on like that would be able that you'd be able to see? Is it that is the actually, that simple? Yeah, we actually do have 24-7. And I I do have to say that it depends on the package that either their employer purchase from the from their um, insurance group or if it is um, um, you know some other organization that is purchasing these services they may say we only need people you know 16 hours a day available other organizations they want us to have access 24 7 and so you know they sign up through the app and it depends on if they're going through their insurance, you know, we may be white labeled through that insurance or will they go through our own group practice and they download the app, they register, they, you know, with a username and a password, it unlocks our services. They can schedule an appointment, time, date of their, of their choice. And then they can look at the profiles and hand select the person that, um, you know, they like their attributes, they like the qualifications, they might like the, you know, how, how uh, friendly they look, you know, what, it, it's all a personal preference, but they can hand select their person that is, that is available to them. Um, and, you know, it's, it is ease of access, I have to say, it's, we have, We've been doing this now for a while and we've tried to take out as many barriers and as many obstacles and, you know, just like with the EHRs, you know, Andy, you know, from, yeah. from being in the hospital and documenting and stuff, it's all about the clicks and the number right. of clicks and how long it, you know, it's same thing with us. We want to make sure that they can get to us right away as, you know, as they need it. And then they can schedule their follow-up appointments at their convenience, you know, so it's um, it definitely we're taking a lot of those obstacles um, obstacles out of the way and you know helping organizations meet their goals too while we're doing that. That's wonderful, Michelle. You mentioned yeah. um, quality care and providing that, and it sounds like you are, and you even kind of touched on the feedback you're getting, and so you, you kind of have a sense of how this is uh, being received. Are there? Would you like to expand on that a little bit, or are there some additional thoughts you would like to share regarding the, the quality care oh, yes. validation of what you're providing? I'm really passionate about this. You know, being a nurse and, and you always want to have, you know, the best for your patients, your, um, you know, their families. And I have to say that we did our due diligence in um, really researching the clinical content specific for our specialties of lactation and nutrition. We developed clinical pathways that are specific to telemedicine. And we've taken the best of that clinical content for lactation and nutrition. We've 
tweaked it, like I said. And that is, you know, we have documentation tools, we have quality care, you know, that is delivered. We have a, a, a review process that we have in place, just like if we were a bricks and mortar, we still, we look at, you know, all of the documentation, we have access to um, any kind of feedback, should there ever be a, a poor patient experience, we have channels that we can go back in to that particular situation, just like you can in the electronic record, and you can go back to the audit, the date and time, find that root cause. To date, we have not had to, to go back and do that because of a problem. We've gone back and done it because we do our, our quality checks, but we really feel like it's because we set it up with a lot of thought and a lot of uh, strategic focus on how we were going to roll this out for telemedicine. The other thing that we have, um, telemedicine is uh, we have emergency management protocols. And so we have systems in place where, where that patient is seen, that's where if there's a 911 call that needs to be um, uh, initiated by the provider, that it is in the place where that city and state where that patient is. It's not where the provider is, but it's, it's where the patient is. And then the online tech support, they guide the provider through the whole process and stay on with them through the whole time till that patient is, is secure and set up with a 911. And so we feel like, you know, we've, we've done thousands of virtual health and lactation visits and we've discovered a lot of lessons learned and we've shared that with clients on, you know, when they're starting up their services, you know, some of those, um, some of those gotchas or some of those painful things, you know, we've, we've really passed that on so that they, they don't have to repeat some of that. But we also feel quality and patient gauge, engagement, that's, that's a measure for success. I mean, that's, if you have a, an engaged team, an engaged patient, client, and you have the quality to back it up, it's, a, you know, it's just like the ease of, of access. That's a patient satisfier. But when they know they have clinically driven, evidence-based background, clinical content that's guiding our team members, um, you know, and the assessments that they do, then, you know, they feel so much better about knowing that we're not missing anything. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of organizations that, you know, want to do this, but it's, um, they may not have the, the resources to help with that, or they may have, um, they may have a lot of uh, challenges with, you know, they've, they've got the technology, but they don't know how to expand the service or really how to do a, a marketing analysis of where, where would the next space be that could utilize this service so our patients are, are not gone. But quality is something that's very near and dear to my heart from, I know it's from my nursing background, but it's also that we were very, very proud of the people that we hire and the vetting process that we go through and the partners that we partner up with. Um, and and the clients that we take on from health, you know, the different health systems and employers and things. So we, we feel very good about that. That's fantastic. Yeah, you know, Michelle, uh, you're, you're a forward thinker and out of box uh, thinker. We need more people like you. Um, the stuff that you've been a part of and, and a lot of, and not just this, um, you're always doing something unique and, and trying to make a change in healthcare. And, and I, you know, we, we're thankful that we have people like you. Uh, to improve the quality. Oh, good. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad my passion shows through. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bit too much, huh? <laughs> I'm glad that you're not you're not practicing. You know, you're not clinically practicing right now, and and you're involved in a lot of these things to change things. You know, to change things to make it better for you know clinicians and uh, and and patients to make it easier for them. So th you know, and I think um, I. I keep up my a little bit of consulting on the side with the advisory services and I'm in yeah. the hospital still with with them. And so it really, it does help. And we were very heavily involved in 
uh, our state rural hospital association were involved in uh, the national um, breastfeeding coalitions, um, you know, things like that. We, um, our president has been a, um, a fellow with, with the um, Rural Hospital Association and stuff. And so there's a lot of state initiatives where I live that we have really, really bad infant and maternal mortality rates. And we also are, I think, 40th in um, the unhealthiness of the state in terms of obese, obesity and comorbidities. And so our services are just, you know, we could stay in our state and never go anyplace else because there's, there's really a lot to be done here, but, but we are national. So that's, you know, that's good, but um, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting how we've, uh, blossomed in utilizing the healthcare background, the clinical background, the IT background, and, and kind of combined it all. We've touched on quality. Are there now regulatory and reimbursement barriers? And um, if so, how do you best address those? Oh, those are those are complex questions. Um, the, you know, this is, this is such a, uh, an area of tremendous potential, especially in the rural and underserved areas. And there has been, um, you know, there's, there's proof that telehealth and video conferencing technology, you know, really does help in cost savings, time savings, and increased uh, access to care. However, the regulatory, um, requirements are are constantly in a state of of change um, reimbursement doesn't have to be a barrier uh, but every state's different and so with telemedicine and there are regular regulations in place for both the commercial and the the medicaid uh populations providers they they need to be aware of of these regulations and requirements so that they can develop their, their programs in a, you know, the state that they wish to practice, but they know what those regulations are. And one of the very best resources out there is the Center for Connected Health Policy. And it's, uh, it goes by the acronym of CCHP. And it's a, it's a program that lists out literally all of the rules by state subdivides them by commercial and Medicaid payers. And it's a it's an offshoot of the Public Health Institute. Mm -hmm. And it's it's an aggregation of all the data at every state level, the definition of, of telemedicine, whether it's synchronous, uh, asynchronous, remote monitoring, video monitoring, you know, video um, visits, all of that. And so it's a place where the policymakers, the health advocates, the, you know, any of the healthcare professionals can go and really go learn their telehealth laws, regulations, and Medicaid policies. And I, I think the last one was the fall of 2019, but their website is absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's constantly being updated. It doesn't have outdated materials and stuff. Um, there's about... Um, there's about 200 bills that have been pushed through regarding telemedicine, uh, and there's there's always there's an evolving and constantly changing landscape. Um, and it, just when you think you know something, there's you know there's a high probability that it's going to change. <laughs> so you do have to you do have to get out there. But you know the the main thing is is when you're when you're talking about a barrier, um, there's regulations and there's the financial side. And the main thing is that people need to be aware of is that every state's different. And just because one state has or hasn't enacted particular rules doesn't mean that your state, uh, that you can't re you know, submit something for reimbursement. Um, we have actually had plans uh, hospitals that have gone back to their health plan and insurance and show, you know, the good case, the good use case for providing a telemedicine service. And they've had the, the plan changed. And so 
if you're if you're thinking about um, you know well insurance is not going to cover this and stuff you would be surprised and it's ever changing and they understand the the professional boards that that license the personnel that provide the service they understand and they get the fact that this is decreasing the cost of health care it's decreasing readmissions it's decreasing um emergency room uh visits it's you know decreasing the infant mortality rate which is you know what we're what we're wanting and so it's even though it's there's areas that are slow because of the regulations and stuff the the coverage and the payment you you just have you do have to work it you do have to know what you're you're looking for and you do have to reach out and show a use case and there have been changes made where they can um you know they end up covering a service so I think that, you know, employers are seeing the investment, um, you know, the access to telemedicine and access to care. And, you know, like I mentioned before, you have, you know, happy employees and you have decrease in, in um, sick days and, you know, you're, it's a um, return on investment in a lot of different ways, not just in, in a financial way, but there's a lot of other positive um, so don't let the the reimbursement scare you off or to be a barrier because it is um it's ever changing and ever accepting uh more and more andy do you have any um points you would like to delve into with that um i have nothing right now specifically but you know i just uh, i appreciate the time that you, you took with us michelle and uh it's just uh, it's a very interesting topic. I don't think a lot of us know um, about this patients just being educated on this topic and you know what's going on with telemedicine, the access that now they, they, they could have um, and the convenience uh, to them um, to to access someone like this these these uh, these professionals. Uh, it just makes things uh, so much better um, and it's I think this kind of continuing process of leaders like yourself, Michelle, to um to educate and to create environments and create these these different um um businesses to to help uh help healthcare and and to prevent these readmissions and, and to prevent the you know reduce the uh infant mortality rates and and be a part of the whole process it's going to make it, it it'll make it better for us all so i you know i i really appreciate this uh discussion and and to educate uh uh, not only myself, but uh, I think a lot of us that are going to be listening to this. Um, you know, it's it's, it's interesting you bring up a good point there. And I was just at a um, an Indiana uh, Breastfeeding Alliance meeting where yesterday, as a matter of fact, where we're setting the goals and objectives for the state for the next five years on on what we're doing in the breastfeeding realm and stuff. And one of the big things is education, especially for pediatricians. And a lot of the, uh, even, you know, myself as a nurse, we didn't have a lot of, of breastfeeding, you know, the importance of it. And, um, you know, it, it is baby's nutrition and stuff. And so, you know, if we want a healthier society, we have to get to the people that are providing the services and, and educate them. And, um, you know, you'd be surprised pediatricians what what they don't get in in school and um so we're we're talking with some of the medical schools and and adding curriculum uh some of the nurses nursing schools um you know various things like that because not only is it telemedicine but it's the you know why why should they help this mom get connected to a lactation consultant and so it it's really um it is really kind of fun and exciting. So thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Before, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. And before we wrap up for the day, if, if there was one piece of advice, a final takeaway or a pearl of wisdom to share with our listeners, what might that be? Oh, I think you know me by now, Jennifer. One thing, that's hard for me to say. <laughs> um, but I... <laughs> I think know your space, know your regulations and what applies, what what type of um, credentialing process do you have to go through to to provide this service and 
when in doubt, you know, Sonder Health is there to help you. <laughs> so. I just, I have one other thing to, I'm just kind of <laughs> curious. And I, I, I guess like we could, uh, we can discuss this later. It's not, I don't, uh, it, but it's, it's something in, in so for, for like a person that it used, you mentioned a phone, is there like an app or something that you would download to, to go through the process of accessing a, a consultant or how is, uh -huh. or is it, you have to go, is it web-based? So you have to actually go through the, you know, like. The yeah, there's an, app. there's an uh, app and then you also can, can do it on your computer too, through the web, either one. Okay. okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's easy. And like we said, we keep it to where it's a, you set your account up really quickly and there's, um, you know, if you're using your insurance or if you're, you know, fee for service, if you have a coupon, um, there's various, various ways to um to access it but it's it's very quick and uh, not a lot of steps to get into the system that's that's uh that's tremendously awesome okay all right thank you so much to both of you for spending time with us today and this was really a very fascinating conversation telemedicine is something that that intrigues me so i appreciate you're both taking some time to, to discuss this and, and share some of the various aspects with us. Oh, absolutely. Anytime. It was, it was a pleasure and um, talk to you soon. We hope you enjoyed the business of medicine. For more episodes in this series or SMA's The Practice of Medicine podcast, go to sma.org slash podcasts. Or subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. For more information about the SMA's mission, please visit sma.org. And thank you for joining us.